Hey guys, it's Steph and welcome back to my channel. So in today's testing video, I'm not gonna be trying out any new makeup, no new makeup today. Instead, I'm gonna be trying out Primark brushes. I've had a ton of requests to try them out and I thought, why not just chuck them in a full dedicated video? So I've got some blending sponges. I just wet this one and I'm really confused by it. I don't understand it at all, but I've got like a mixture of different brushes. Um, we've got like their PS collection. I've got these eye brushes, got a few of like their single brushes. Um, I then have this one, which is like their Beauty and the Beast brush, rose makeup brush, very pretty. Uh, and then I also have a few little sets. I've got this kind of like mermaidy vibe one, which looks very similar to the new Tarte brushes. And then I also have the Aqua glitter brush set which looks like that. So what I'm gonna be doing today is just applying my regular kind of everyday makeup, products that I know I like and I know how they apply. And then I'll just kind of like judge how the brushes work with the makeup. So let's get into it. So first of all, I'm just gonna apply primer. This is the Rimmel Fix and Perfect one. I'm just gonna apply that with my fingers. Haven't even put my headband on yet. How rude of me. Da, 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 da. Perfect. So then I have some sponges, a little beauty blender thing. So these came in a pack of two. I'm dropping that. Um, let me just find the packaging. This was the PS two pack blender sponge and this was £1.50. So it came with these two and I have wet them. This one is massive. This one's quite hard, um, but it does get softer as you kind of like fill it with water. And then there's this one, which felt really, really nice. And then I squeezed it and it kind of did this. Like, I don't know if you guys can see, but like, it, it's it's really quite weird and it's still still full of water even though I've ringed it out loads of times. So I'm, I'm really confused by this one. This one feels better than this one. This one feels a bit more cheapy, but it, it don't look too good. So I'm gonna give them both a go. Now what I have here is my Milani 2-in-1 foundation. I haven't used this in a while actually. And I'm just gonna take some of that on the, on the weird sponge. It almost sounds hollow applying it. Like if I put my face to the microphone, can you guys hear that? To be honest, seems to be applying it quite well. Finish seems to be quite nice. That's applying it fine. Right, okay, let's try this other sponge quickly. This one is a lot more stiff. This one seems to be soaking up a lot more of the product. Like normally two pumps would be plenty to do my face, but this one has applied it a bit more sheer because it has kind of sucked it up a lot. So I do think I prefer this really weird one. It does remind me quite a bit of the Sport FX one, the one that I've been loving recently. Um, but the Sport FX one doesn't like go weird or anything like that. This one, I just, I just don't understand what it's doing. How is it even, how does it do that? So obviously I haven't done my forehead yet and that's because I'm thinking this might be like a decent buffing brush. It doesn't really say what it's for. It just says makeup brush, but let's open it up and see how it feels. A lot less dense than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be a lot more dense, but how how stunning is that? Like, let's be real here. How nice is that? Oh no. We've got a lot of bristles going loose here. So I don't know if you guys can see, but like, if I just give it, if I just give it a little, little once over, then it does have a few little like stray hairs coming off it. Nothing major. Um, they have mostly kind of gone now, but. Just something to note. Yeah, so this isn't as dense as I thought it was gonna be. I don't really know what you'd necessarily use this for. I mean, it could be a powder brush, but I'm thinking this reminds me more of like a buffing brush than anything else. So I'm gonna give it a go. Looks a little bit streaky. I'm so confused as to what this brush would be for though, because it's almost like too dense for a powder brush, but it's not dense enough to be a buffing brush. I'm not really sure of how practical it is. Looks amazing, could be a cute little gift. Um, might work for like cream contouring or something. I might give that a go in a minute. It's kind of sheared out my foundation as well. Like normally this foundation is super, super thick, but I don't know, like the few spots there that I have would normally be covered up by a lot of this foundation, but this just kind of, I don't know. I love how this looks, but I'm not overly sure how practical this is. I'll give it another go in a second. I'll try and find like another use for it or something, but I'm a little bit confused, not gonna lie. So then I'm just gonna go in with my usual concealer, my It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye. I prefer to apply this stuff with my fingers, so 
I'm just gonna do that. Then for my second concealer, I'm gonna be using Tarte Shape Tape. So just pop some of that under my eyes as well. Layer it on up. And again, just blend that out. Yeah, again, seems to be blending out my concealer fine. I'm liking this sponge. So then I think just to test that rose brush out again, I'm gonna do a little bit of cream contouring just to see how it like, how it blends that out. So I'm just taking my Iconic London stick. Oh, she forgot to blend her concealer right there. Rookie mistake. All right, let's see how this blends that out. Answer to that question is that it, it kind of doesn't. Go back in with our trusty little sponge. Not really a fan of how these sponges blend my cream contour out. It's It works, it's fine, but it's not really doing anything amazing. So then, what should we move on to next? I've got like, okay, we've got a powder brush, so I'll get that boy out. This was £1.50. Whoa. This is actually a lot more flat than I thought it was gonna be. We've also got this guy, it's like a double-ended brush. This was £2.50. So I've got like a little kind of like angled contouring side and then a smaller powder side, which I think might be good for like bronzer, blusher. And then if I can get into it again, these are cute. Okay, so I've got like this kind of fluffy brush, which is quite big actually. So I'm thinking that might work for under my eyes. So I'm gonna take my Kat Von D setting powder. These brushes are so cute. Okay, let's take some of that powder. That's applied that absolutely fine. Maybe a little bit smaller than I'd want. I'd probably prefer to have something a little bit bigger. Let's try this guy. The kind of like blusher brush thing that I mentioned. See, this one's just a little bit too big. If we had something that was like half the size or something, then I think we'd be in business. But yeah, that works. These are actually really, really soft. And then I'll take this guy. This was the £1.50 brush. So we'll take some of that powder. I'm a bit confused because this is like a really flat brush. It's got like a really like flat edge to it. Dust that all over. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. It's not a brush that I necessarily like. I don't dislike it. I don't hate it. Um, it's not doing anything wrong. It's just not really doing much right. If you need like a super cheap powder brush, it does the job. Before I forget, I'm just gonna quickly try this guy as well, the rose one. I did just clean the brush off so it shouldn't have any like residue on it. Okay, it seems to pick up the powder quite nicely. Okay, it's a bit better with like a loose powder instead of like creams or anything. Definitely think this is more of a powder brush, but it just, because of like the little like divots in it, it doesn't seem very soft. Like, listen to this. It's quite hard. It's not like uncomfortable to use or anything like that, but it does feel where like these bits kind of like stick out. In some angles, it can just feel a little bit stabby. I definitely think this is more of something that you'd buy for how it looks as opposed to how it performs. Not that great of a brush. Looks cute, but not the best brush I've ever tried, I'll be honest. So then this set, which is eight pounds, comes with four different brushes and it also comes with a little makeup bag. That's actually quite cute. Like you can kind of shake all the like glitter and everything around it, if you guys can see that, but the glitter kind of moves around, nice. And then if we take this brush, which is the one I think I'm gonna use, that just, it's not really like my thing. I do tend to just prefer something that maybe, I don't know, just looks like this or something, something a bit more sophisticated, like me. Um, but I can appreciate that, that's cute. Yeah, these feel nice and soft as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do one side with this brush, the slightly more expensive one, and then one side with this one, which was the two pen fifty brush. So I'm gonna use my Tarte Pro Glow To Go palette, just the chisel shade here. And apply that. Okay, that comes off super pigmented. Looks a little bit patchy. I don't know what you guys think, but I'm gonna quickly try the powder side, like the slightly more fluffy brush side. Yeah, it looks a little bit patchy. Hmm. I'll then take this guy, so the slightly more expensive one. I just wanna shake it, cause it's, cause it's cute. And I'll just take some of that. This one already feels a lot softer and a lot more dense. Yeah, definitely prefer this guy to the other one. It just feels a lot more like, for example, like my Zoeva brushes or something. I don't know, it just feels softer, feels a little bit more dense, the bristles feel a little bit better quality and seems to apply everything a lot better as well. So then for bronzer, I'm just using my MAC Give Me Sun. I'm gonna use this kind of like mermaidy one and then the end of the double-ended one. So again, we'll do like the cheaper one on this side like we did earlier. 
The ones were face up. Is that doing much? Yeah, it's just kind of looking a little bit patchy here. I don't know if you guys can see that. But it just looks a bit patchy. I'll then take this one, this bigger fluffy brush, and just take some of that product. Yeah, it just feels loads better. So I think, in all honesty, and to be honest, like, that set was £8, I think, and it came with four brushes, so £2 each. Um, it's actually kind of cheaper to buy the set than it is to just buy this one, for example. I mean, the quality seems a lot better in these, and they look a whole lot cuter than these guys as well, and they perform better. So, on, like, my first impression so far, I'd probably say go for the sets over the individuals, because the quality seems to be a lot better on the um, set brushes than anything else. So then, I think I might go in with this other brush, just like a slightly smaller powder brush. Could probably get away with using this as a foundation, eh, I don't know actually, I was gonna say a foundation buffing brush, but it does seem a little bit, a little bit more fluffy than anything else. So I'm just gonna take my Tarte blusher. This one is in the shade Insightful, which is like a little mini that I got in a kit once upon a time. A little bit more dense than I'd normally want for a blusher brush. Like now I feel like I need to go back in with my bronzer brush quickly just to like diffuse it. Well, we are going ham with bronzer today. So yeah, I don't really know. I don't really know what I would use this brush for. I just do tend to prefer more fluffy brushes. Um, but this one is fine for like bronzer, blusher, whatever. I just prefer something a little bit more like this, a little bit more fluffy. So next, we'll add some highlighter. I now have a single of my Champagne Pop highlighter, which I love. Normally I have it in the palette, but Becca recently sent me a single, which has gotten me very excited, and I'm now way more inclined to use it. So if you don't know, Champagne Pop is like, it's stunning, it's insane, it's beautiful. So for highlight, I'm gonna be using this fan brush from the little like glittery collection thing that we got. Don't normally use fan brushes, but that was like the only kind of highlighter brush I came across. Ooh, look at that. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, this fan brush is applying everything just like how, for example, my Zoeva fan brush would apply it. So yeah, happy with that. Oh, that freaking glow though. And then what I have here is a little angle brush from the Mermaid collection, but this is quite a thick angle brush. I don't know if you guys can see. If I like get it right on the side, it's quite thick compared to, let me just take this like super grubby Zoeva one. But like if I compare the two, then the Zoeva one is a lot thinner. So a little bit worried about this, but we'll give it a go. I'm gonna take my Freedom Brow Pomade, which I haven't used in the longest time. I feel like it's gonna be fine for like the majority of my brow. And then as soon as it gets to like the tail end of my brow, things could get tricky. Oh my God, that is so thick. Like look, if I just like, if I try and do a thin line, and that's as thin as it gets. Yikes. It's fine for filling in the bulk of my brow though. I'd just say if you want like hair like strokes, this is probably gonna be way too thick. Okay, so that's okay. If you don't have an angle brush, then it's good to add one to your collection. Um, but would I like recommend this angle brush on its own? No. I know Essence definitely do like a thinner one, try and get like a liner brush or something, um, because this one is just, it's pretty thick. I think you would have a hard time doing like wing liner or your brows with it because it is so thick. Um, but it could work for like smudging out like a pencil liner or something like that. Just heads up, it's not the thinnest wing brush in the world. So next we'll move on to eyes. Now I don't actually have too many eye brushes. Like I showed you at the start, I do have this complete eye brush set which was £3.50. So what they have here is they have an angle brush, very very similar to the other one, the super thick one, although I think this one is actually even thicker. Um, we also have a kind of flat brush almost, it's kind of like a rounded flat brush. We then have another smaller flat brush, which for me would be good for like inner corner or something. I haven't even put highlighter on my inner corner yet. Okay, so I'll be using that for that. And then we also have this flat fluffy brush, but I kind of wish that they got rid of maybe like this guy and replaced it for an actual fluffy brush. It was near impossible to find any kind of fluffy brush at Primark, which I thought was a little bit strange. This was like as close to it got and then also this from the uh, Mermaid collection. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna be taking my Tarte Manny to palette. And because I have already set my lids, I think what I'm gonna do is go in with this shade here with that big fluffy brush, but I'm gonna try and be quite light-handed with that. It seems to be working quite well for the crease. And then I think I'm gonna be using this brush a lot. So what I'm gonna do is take this guy and just take some of this brown shade, this is called Saucy. 
and just kind of like pack that all over the lid for a minute. What the hell? Why is it skipping like that? Let's blend that out a bit more, but I'm a bit confused now. It's like skipping on my eye and I don't really know why. This is like my usual palette that I go to for every day and it never does that. And like my lid was set and everything like that. Everything was set in place. Can you guys see it's made like, it's almost made like a little cut crease. It wasn't quite what I was going for. It just doesn't seem to be blending out or anything. Weird. Right, I'm gonna take a very, very light hand and just put it on like the tip of this brush and try and work that in the crease a bit more. Okay, I think we've kind of saved it, but like that has never, ever happened with this palette before. What are you doing to me? Uh, I'm just gonna take the shade Saucy again and just pop that on my lower lash line. See, they seem, they feel nice like on my eye. They feel fine and it's applying under my eye fine, but that was really bloody weird. I've never really had that before. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is take, I think, maybe like this brush here, the one that I said I would never use, that I'm now going to use. And actually, I'm gonna take this shade from my Huda Smoky Obsessions palette, I think. Like this gold, maybe. I haven't used this palette in time. So I thought I could bring it out today. That looks nice. That's applying that fine. So then I'll go back in with my Champagne Pop highlighter and I'm gonna take this little flat brush, the one that I said would be good for my inner corner. And I'm gonna pop that on my inner corner. I'm so confused by this brush. I kinda wanna try it on the other eye. It's like, it's gone patchy, I don't understand. I'm just having to go in with like a ton of my transition shade just to like blur out the edges a bit because it just, it goes super patchy. All right, so now just so I don't bore you guys, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the other eye off camera. If anything weird happens, I will make sure I film it and let you guys know what's happening. But yeah, just so I don't bore you guys, I'm gonna go ahead, do this other eye off camera, add some lashes, add some mascara, and then that's pretty much it. All right, you guys, so the eye makeup is on. Also added something to my lips. I'm wearing the B Makeup Lipstick in the color Snatch. It's like a super, Pale Nude, I've been loving this recently. Let's talk about these eyeshadow brushes. So again, from the slightly more expensive range, the Mermaid one, this guy is fine. It's a pretty big fluffy brush. If it was smaller, I would much prefer it, but it's fine, it applies everything quite nicely. These little flat brushes, again, absolutely fine. This guy, however, no. Overall, I can't say I would recommend any of those eyeshadow brushes. This one is fine, so if you were looking at getting the kit, then you can definitely use this. Could work as like highlight brush, um, can work as an under eye setting powder brush. Let's do a quick once over over everything we tried. Obviously, we've gone through the eyeshadow brushes. Let's talk about these sponges. Hang on a minute. This guy's finally come to life. Now he looks a little bit more normal. Um, I actually quite like this. It's, it's a very, very weird texture and consistency but it applied my foundation really, really nicely. This guy is fine if you're in a pinch. You can make it work, but it's definitely not the best. This rose brush, I mean, it's stunning, but it's not that good. It looks amazing, but it doesn't really apply anything that well, to be honest. I mean, it applies powder fine, but it also feels a little bit weird because of how the brush is actually designed. This powder brush is absolutely fine. Nothing to write home about. It applied my powder fine. It's just, it's fine. Um, nothing amazing about it, nothing bad about it. If you do need a powder brush, it works. This little set, the one with the sequins in, was a really, really nice brush set, actually. The only one I didn't use was this guy, but um, it feels pretty nice, and it's just kind of like a standard, like, cut crease brush or something. We then have this fan brush, which is really, really nice as well. I get a lot of questions about where you can get fan brushes. And this is a decent one, it did the job. We then have the Mermaid brush set, which I think is a brush set I use the most in this video. Um, so we've got this guy, we've discussed this. Um, this angled brush is like, it does the job, but there are definitely a ton of other angled brushes you can get your hands on that are way thinner, because this one is just a little bit too thick for me. This guy, the double-ended one that I think was £2.50, it's okay. Um, this kind of made my contour look a little bit patchy. This side was nice enough, it's quite like a nice little fluffy powder brush. And yeah, I think that's all the brushes that I tried. So overall, they're fine. Like generally speaking, the brushes are absolutely fine. I know a lot of people always think you have to spend a ton of money on brushes to get good ones. Generally, I'd say that if you were looking to pick up some Primark brushes, go for the sets because they do seem to be a lot better quality. And I mean, when you work it out, these cost two pound each. 
this is £1.50 on its own, so definitely recommend you pick up the sets. So I really hope you guys find this video helpful. Let me know if you want me to do more videos like this. I know it's like a slightly different testing video, but I have had a few requests to do it. I thought maybe I could do like testing TK Maxx brushes. Um, let me know if there's any other brushes you want me to try, because I can definitely do it. If you did enjoy this video, then please do give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you don't see more of me, because I upload all the damn time. But apart from that, that's it from me. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.